Welcome to USA Global TV and Radio, where our mission is to provide education, entertainment, hope, and inspiration. USA Global TV and Radio connects you with experts and audiences all around the world every single day to help you succeed in business and to live a richer life. Visit us at usaglobaltv.com to learn about career and life-changing training and mentoring programs like The Listening Mentor. Subscribe to our newsletter to stay informed about our special programs and offers. Discover how you can become a guest on one of our shows or a host or producer of a USA Global TV and radio show of your very own. That's USA Global TV and radio, where the doctor is always in. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome home to USA Global TV and Radio, where we provide world-class education, entertainment, hope, and inspiration. I'm Dr. Jacqueline Kerbeck, and our show today is Coexistence and Sustainability, where we explore why it's so important for all creatures to be respected and to understand how they fit in with this whole chain of life. So joining me is the star of our show, Pet Psychic Amina. She's joining us from California, and she's the one who has actually taught me so much about the importance of taking care of Mother Earth, taking care of our planet, understanding how each creature impacts other creatures, especially the honeybee, the monarch butterflies. We could go on and on. Today, we're going to talk about Beyond Band. Bambi, cute little Bambi the deer, and what the real lives of deer look like and the importance that they have in the ecosystem. Let's welcome pet psychic Amina as she joins us again from California, USA. Hello. Hello. You How are, are you today? Weather, right? <laughs> what? You're dying to know the weather, right? I, I'm sure it's sunny and it's beautiful there, right? Exactly. Without the humidity and all of that type of stuff, but our background is perfect for it every week. For sure, for sure. I actually am traveling this week and uh, where I am, it was 100 degrees yesterday. Wow. So uh, the planet is really heating up, although I know there's a lot of controversy. People don't believe it, but it does seem like it's hotter than ever. So before we get into that topic, why don't you tell us a little bit about how you are a pet psychic, but also <laughs> an advocate for coexistence and sustainability? I'm, I'm very pleased and, and, and humbled by being on your show every week. So it, it, that is an amazing question also. I have been blessed throughout my childhood, adulthood, teenagehood, and every otherhood uh, with opportunities to find my joy and find my place pretty quick. I had a mother who I'm the youngest of five, and she saw what her children were into, what they were passionate about. One of my sisters is a professional cellist and, and has played in, the, in, in groups and marching bands and every other version of it and owns her own cello for that. And I have many other siblings that have special things that they love sports or they love this. And my family made sure we did that. So I was very fortunate at 11 to go work in a wildlife sanctuary. I was about as tall as I am now. And I was able to work with animals that had been in movies and nobody knew what to do with them. So they came to this sanctuary and many other things. Uh, animals that were found in their back of somebody's uh, yard and it's illegal to have, et cetera, et cetera. So I've been very, very blessed not only to have a college education, in all things animal, but also being one-on-one -on -one with them, holding them, working with them. And, and I'll leave you guys all on one of my favorite true stories that everybody can show just kind of quirky I am. I was doing a demonstration with some younger kids and I was holding a beautiful uh, snake. I don't re actually remember what the kind of snake it was. It kind of left in the story when uh, everything else happened. So as children will do, these uh, guys were anywhere from 15 down, but mostly at yeah, 12, nine was our youngest with this crowd. And Dr. Jacqueline, I bet you cannot 
imagine what I did to uh, get everybody screaming and not running. Nobody ran, but everybody was just like, oh my God, you're going to die. You're going to die. They were talking about me. And it was because the snake started chewing on me, literally back down. <laughs> he was getting very, uh, was a male and he was getting very stressed by the energy that the kids brought. And no matter how many times they did settle, but not really as much as the snake wanted. Cause you remember we're carnivores and that's how they see us. So I didn't scream or yell. It's not usually my go-to pretty, you gotta really get me for those kind of stuff. And I just went, hang on a minute. Let me pass the snake back into their cage. But I, they could see the snake was attached to my hand with his, with his teeth in. So what is it like to be bitten by a snake? Eh, as long as it's not poisonous, that's, eh, about as you know bad as scraping your knee on the bike and you know falling off or something like that my uh boss gave me the rest of the day off and i was like well i feel just fine because you know when you have an active life with wildlife or trees and all the things i've done you get scraped up a few times but i, I will tell you i have never ever let a snake bite me since <laughs> i just didn't really think uh that was necessary for any of us so there's some of my background, loving reading, uh, college education, and working directly with the animals that I want us to leave space for. Thanks so much for sharing your background and also that story. I'm glad that you're okay. <laughs> yeah. I, that, uh, I wouldn't be handling snakes myself because I'd be afraid of getting bit. But you know what they say when you fall off the bike, you have to get back out there. Absolutely. So I was also thinking today, I went for a walk. I told you it was very hot here and I was wearing my big hat and I thought to myself, I wonder if there are any ticks, what happens with, you know, where do you get ticks? And then I thought about deer and apparently deer carry a lot of ticks. I don't know if that's true or not. But it is. They yeah. just seem to have the, the location, the, the right address for, for them. And, and it, imagine those hooves do not get to every space. If you, if you're with an animal that has more digits, uh, like uh, any of the monkeys or any of those types of, even the dogs with four legs, you got, you've got enough room to, to get them off. Now it's not, it's not foolproof on any animal, any dog owner, cat owner that walks around in a place that has ticks knows that once that animal comes back in, they're just, they're doing the, <laughs> the massage that the dog thinks is having. But if they really do, what we're doing is a, a tick check because why it'll kill them because it'll kill. Uh, we're a little bit harder. Probably we, all those Twinkies we're eating and <laughs> not solid, uh, you know, uh, carrion and m m w you know, all the meat and vegetables that the wild animals are getting. And they're grooming themselves all the time. Well, we don't really have that function where I can reach around and <laughs> reach my shoulder. I got to get somebody else. So if you don't see it, it's going to really uh, play havoc on you because it's not only drinking your blood, if you want to look at it that way, but they're taking that as their nutrients, but they're giving you whatever they've already eaten, mm. whatever they've already contacted with. So if they've got a something that's got a terrible disease and it can be carried definitely through blood, uh, the ticks have just now introduced you to possibly a disease the ER doctors won't have seen. So be aware, it must be taken care of. You've got to get them out. So, and they will burrow in and their, their mouth is kind of like a little, what I like to say is like little jaw teeth and, and it's just teeth, 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 teeth. And they'll go in there and, and, and extract the bug. And you, you probably won't know. So what do you do after a hike? You take off your socks, you take off your shoes, you go in a, a, a shower or someplace and look at your whole body, under your underarms, through your fingers, the really tough stuff. You're probably going to need help. It is not going to go typically to the back of your body unless that's the way they get on your body. They're going to go to warm places. So why I'm saying between your fingers and under your arms. This is a really warm, comfortable place, great blood flow, and it can make you horribly sick. So watch out. They can give you diseases. There are creams and lotions out there. Every great hiking company has something that you can try. Uh, for me, I have gone to places where mosquitoes were the killers as far as the, we just got bit all over. And Dr. Jacqueline, I bet you and no one's going to know what I'm going to rep recommend. It is not sold as bug spray, but 
all of us who know this product, which you have to buy from a private person, really, it gets rid of the mosquitoes. It, it puts a dab fur on anybody trying to cross it because they don't like the smell or the taste. And you have any idea what this product is and who you get it from? It's skin so soft from Avon. Yes, because I've had you for so long. Remember the first yeah, time I, I listened? <laughs> oh, look at that. Look at our memories work. So, yeah, it's a wonderful baby oil. You can sit in the butt bathtub with it and all the little bugs will just run away. They'll be in the bathtub with you, by the way. <laughs> they just don't got anywhere to go. But this is a great way to put skin so soft on a cotton ball, put it all over you. For some reason, there, you know, the bugs aren't talking to me. Um, and tell me why, but something in the ingredients, it's been passed down for a generation and generation and generation that skin so soft from Avon is really a great source and just think of all the softness you're doing to your skin <laughs> as Absolutely. opposed to a given chemical if you're going to go with the fly sprays and things like that you've got to be really careful like you couldn't give it to a small child skin so soft on a cotton ball yeah you can regulate that get it under their little arms or get it between their little fingers and hope they don't soak on their fingers while you're doing it but again this is has far less chemicals than what we see in the mainstream so for everybody out there who's wondering about ticks and uh, they they travel on deer, they can travel on mice. I've read that they look for a free ride to get wherever yep. it is they want to go. Yep. So let's talk a little bit about deer. So when you and I were growing up, we remember Bambi. I'm sure Bambi's still prevalent in uh, <laughs> yep. children's books in a lot of ways. And Bambi's so sweet and cute. And of course, there's Rudolph the Red and his reindeer. But there are a lot of people who are hunting deer, who, who like to eat deer meat, who want to have the deer heads on the wall. So what purpose do deer serve in terms of the ecosystem? Are, do you have any knowledge on that? Yeah, they, uh, they're... they're whole job is to manage the forest. And let me explain what that means. So they are herbivores, which means they just plants and seeds and that type of stuff. So we're not talking about meat eaters. Meat eaters have a different makeup of their feces. And that's where I'm going. So deer, their feces are coming all through plants. So guess what they do? They eat seeds, they eat plants, they eat all kinds of plants, all different parts of the plant, and then they poop it out. So if you've ever gardened or know anybody who has told you, oh, I gotta wipe all this soil for my yard and my plants and all of that kind of stuff, I have plants in my house and some of them are fairly big or very tall. They get new soil also. Now I'm a little bit, I don't bring up the whole pot. Some of the pots are too, too heavy for me to do, but I'm adding them to the top and then soaking them in. So there is a way to do that for in your home. Well, guess what? These little guys are doing the same thing. They're eating all the leaves and the bugs and everything. But what happens when you get a tick? Then you ask your neighbor to help out because what they're doing is they're sucking the blood. And if you don't look out for it, on your dogs, cats, make sure every time you come in the house, if you're in a place that has ticks, you need to stop them outside the door and go all the way through. They have combs and different grooming tips that and tools that you can use to get them off safely. Because what you don't want to do is get the head and leave it in the body and the body gets broken off because you still got the, got the eating part happening. So it's a really big deal to find out if you in your area have any kind of ticks or bugs that will chew on your pets make sure you do whatever's recommended by the veterinarian community and all these people that are dealing with it every single day of their life they've got jackets that have chemicals in them they have oil oils it goes on and on it just depends on what your green areas are like it's going to be different in every place and if you live in a state like california like i do Literally, we have all those places. We have snow, we have sun, we have deserts. So it just depends on where you are. So find out there. And in the day and age we are on, in the computer world, guess what? You can Google it and really get a lot of great information. What you need, what you don't need, um, things you can make yourself. There are some organic versions that you can make yourself. Find out what those ingredients are, where you live, and go for it. 
Absolutely. Thank you for that. You know, I was wondering, and I didn't bother to look this up because it just came to mind. I had an issue many years ago with bed bugs. I mm. brought them back in a suitcase when I was traveling. And uh, since then, I will never bring a suitcase in, <laughs> the house, in the garage or somewhere never near a bedroom. But the bed bugs kind of looked like what a tick looks like. And I know ticks yeah. can be very small, but they also live on blood and they, and, and I know they live on other things as well. So any idea if there's any relationship between them? You know, I haven't seen anything in the books and the, the references I've read. So it could be, it could be absolutely. I'd love to hear from somebody if they have, have love to do research or love to look all that stuff up. I haven't seen it. What, what we mostly do with specifically I want to say I'm trying to do this. Yeah, in uh, the bugs, but but lizards and all of when they're similar, they're going to use some modality of getting to the uh, blood and getting to sores. You have you know some bugs that just absolutely drive you crazy. You get a little cut, a little sore, man, they are there, mm -hmm. <laughs> and they and they're blood suckers type things. And you're going to get this in the same thing with uh, ticks and fleas. That's how they burrow in. They got this great um, little mouth, that little little bitty bitty teeth, and there they go. <laughs> like I bet the you know the guys building the freeways probably checked with them on, hey, how's that going? <laughs> you know, because burrowing in, you got to keep the whole side of the person still standing. So you can't take too much. You can't take too little. You know, of the of blood, much less think about it like building a bridge. You've got your legs that go down to the you know the road underneath. That the reason they're bringing in a bridge in. But you've got to know where the weak part is in the center of the bridge to reinforce. Your body's the same way. Your body has similarities to needing certain nutrition. You're going to find people that are allergic to one, two, three, four, five things. One thing, I grew up not being able to tolerate caffeine. It was great because I was the only one not drinking Coke. <laughs> and so as an adult, I was like, oh, well, that probably worked out really well for me. But I found out that I got horrible cramps and I got sick. And I didn't figure it out until about the third caffeine. Uh, and so I never drank Coke again in, in my younger life. I now can dabble in it if I really want some. But again, I'm not used to doing it. So think about that when you're working on your own self or you're working with your pet and you need to find out. Do the science, do the, you know, do they get really itchy after walking on that side of the park? It can happen. Your pets can be highly allergic to something that you're just not aware of. But when you are close and aware with your that pet all the time, you'll notice it. You, you really will. And if not, I encourage you to document and say, hey, you know what? I hadn't thought of this before, but he really comes back, dog, cat, whatever. Believe it or not, people take their cats for walks too, and they come back itchier. That's a really, really common result of a reaction. What you're not seeing usually because you have, they have hair. Now, of course, hairless animals are very popular right now also, but even the hairy ones, you're going to have to cut that fur back to find out what's going on. And then it's probably going to be a trip to the vet to make sure you get the right kind of treatment to get that rash down. Because what rash is, it's angry skin. It's very true. You know, we have uh, one of our team members, Red O'Loughlin, who talks a lot about if you are just treating a symptom, you know, that's one thing. If you're looking for the cause, the root cause of it, then that's another thing. And I think what's interesting, just to go back to ticks for a moment, you mentioned that they can burrow their head into your body. So if you try ripping it, the body out, but you don't get the head. It's the same thing. Yep. But so you may forget that you even had a tick bite. And then at some time <laughs> in the future, you end up with some kind of symptoms. Right. And I think there's uh what is it is that you can get from a deer tick. So oh, um that's a really bad one. That's yeah, that's one you that you'll get killed. We'll have to think of the name. I, I want to say lupus, but I don't know if that's right or no, not. No, I don't think it's lupus. Lyme um, disease. It's Lyme disease. There you go. There Lyme you go. That, so I was like, no, I think it's more fruity than that. And I think like, I don't know why I think that. Oh, that that's why. <laughs> that's why it's Lyme in it. So yeah. you may forget, like maybe it's sometime in the future and you forget that you even had the tick bite and the doctors are looking and searching. So right. 
I also think it's important if you do get bitten by a tick or any kind of animal, you make a note of it somewhere, you keep a yep. journal, you, you put it in your phone under notes or something so yep. that you can go back and look at it later and say, oh, maybe this is the actual cause of what I'm dealing with right now. Exactly. And what's fabulous about the digital calendars we all now keep is just what you said. You will put it on the date you went for the hike in your calendar. You've got the day, you're going to add the time, what you think it was. And if you have a bug, that you can take a picture of that came off your clothes even better because the day you're going to need to go to the doctor and you have all that information. Oh my gosh, you just helped yourself and the doctor diagnose you properly and get the right bug. If you went hiking in a place that you never usually do, or you, or if you're like me and you just don't know the name of the bug, but you can, you know, squish them or whatever and or keep them and get a shot of them all of us are carrying cell phones now to enjoy all the hiking we do and, and i don't know about you but i love taking pictures of the of the plants and the animals and these gorgeous man non-made hills and valleys guess what you can take a picture of your bug and when you need treatment and or if you do need treatment you have the most prized piece of information for those doctors and it's what bit you? What plant did you walk through? Is this an allergy? They'll know that when they see your skin and how to treat you. It's, it's really, really vital. And I feel like we're so blessed with people that know how to manage not staying on their phone all day. But for me, I get to go on hikes and walks and, and get inspired for other work I'm doing because I saw something that led me there. You know what I mean, Dr. Jacqueline? It doesn't have to be the full answer. It's like, I want to make a new rose garden or this, but I don't know what roses I want this year or something. It doesn't have to be that black and white. You could walk around, see somebody who's got a great ivy or a great other type of plant, and you go, oh, I hadn't, I hadn't thought of that one. I'd like to try that. And you can grow from there. Very true, very true. Now, let's go back to deer for a moment. So if someone is thinking how cute little Bambi is and they think, you know, I'd like to just raise a deer, is a deer something that you can raise in your home? No, it's illegal. <laughs> let's not start that problem. <laughs> uh, because imagine if everybody decided to take anything, anything, and I mean snake, bug, bird, deer, everything in between and take it home, we wouldn't have any. So, and is it is it truly the best thing for the animal that you want it? <laughs> no, it would be like if you captured a human and said, you're gonna marry me and we're gonna have lots of kids and then you're gonna get a really good job so I don't have to work anymore. And they're like, yeah, when when are you accosting me into you know slavery? And it's like, no, you, you can't do that with wildlife either. Because if you take, and we're, we're living this already right now, is we have overtaken the trees or the bushes and or made half of the animals in that area extinct. And we're wondering why we have floods and mountains coming down and all that because we don't have the animals that work together to create a great outdoor, for us, existence. So remember that when you think about taking a daddy long leg or a, a great spider or something, you say, oh, I'm just going to take one. Well, but you don't know if 10 people in the last four weeks all took one. And then there isn't anybody to manage maybe mosquitoes, maybe a different type of thing. But every animal affects every animal, and we're in that. So remember, if you, if you decide to take an animal home, a bug or whatever, somewhere in there, you're breaking up a natural chain of how the earth goes through maintaining their water, their bushes, their plants, because those relationships are there. Everything is symbiotic. Everybody needs everybody and helps everybody. And, it's, and shows the root what happens when they are there. I've talked about this before, about where this uh, building company, this, this happened about 25 years ago at least, and they were looking at this great waterway. And they're like, great, we'll put up a, a, a what is it, a, a wall, 
and we're gonna put that and we'll put the houses over here, houses over here, all the all the beavers left because the water was gone. And then it rained and the entire town flooded because they took away the organic natural way of how beavers reroute water to where everybody gets a chance to not only the fish, but the water and the plants that grow there. But the construction people didn't see it that way because that's not their forte, but it is the beaver. And guess what? About 10, 15 years later, after they had so many floods and so many houses ruined, they put the dam, put a dam back, put the creek back, put, the, put all the waterways back and had everybody stay on, on a different plane. It, it made a huge difference in how, first of all, how the house is sold because before nobody wanted them and how they were maintaining the waterways. But we shouldn't have to wait that long. Sometimes we just don't know better until we see the, you know, the outcome of what we've done. It's very true. It's the human that comes in and invades all the different areas. And yeah. we've talked about this before with all the building and the commercial developments, and then animals were living in a certain place. Now the place is cleared so they can start building. And then where do the animals go? You see them running through neighborhoods. It's like, why is there a bear here? Why is <laughs> it's this a away? I don't know. Because <laughs> he was bored and just trying to see where the other jelly is. <laughs> And even with the oceans, um, there's so much overcrowding and then pollution. So I'd love to have you address when we think again about deer. And I mentioned this to you before the show. I've heard from people who are hunters that it's okay to go and kill deer during hunting season because there's so many deer and the deer are running into people's gardens and eating their plants. What are your thoughts about too many deer and it's okay to take them out. My go-to always will be, is it the human that needs the ear, the deer to say they're macho and they can shoot a, an animal that doesn't even understand uh, guns. Now they get there, they get there. Second generations will say, Oh, watch out for that. Whatever, you know, they don't have a name for it. So it's never a fair fight. If you're going to get into a fight of who survives, I still think it should be a fair fight. And a gun does not do that. If you go to the Native Americans, you will see the most miraculous, wonderful way of coexisting. These tribes and people and so many other things, not just uh, Native Americans. It, there are so many different tribes all over the world. And they honor how many deer, how many bear, uh, bears, how many of this. And they never, they never seem to go over what would naturally happen with these animals being, you know, food for, for another animal. They don't overtake. I'm sorry to say, there's a truth of oh, the, what we've lived. You can see the statistics everywhere. You see the Caucasian, you see the white uh, settlers. My family came from that also. And I can take responsibility and say, no, I'm a part of the problem. Now that I know that I'm a part of the problem, what am I gonna do about it? My kids think I'm ridiculous most of the time. <laughs> but when we go out and we've done something, and if I happen to see a thing of trash that obviously fell out of somebody's pocket or it's a bag, but always the canned goods even more so, I will go and pick them up. And my kids will go, oh, that's gross, mom. Why are you touching all that stuff? And I said, well, because I can wash my hands pretty good when I get home. But some animal is going to either come into these bags or cans or whatever and get themselves killed by either consuming whatever was in the can and or somebody steps on it and kicks it out. There's a number of different problems. But because we don't honor the soil we live on, we're not taking care of everybody who's living there. Just because you can put a bridge up where you think the beavers should be, it's still the beavers that are the experts. 
and I can't tell you how many studies they've done and how many papers I, I've actually written on and, and talked about is they've taken the beavers out or literally one town, they just took the, they just put the barrier out, which was logs and sticks because the, 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 they made it out of what materials they could find. So they're going to have all those logs and everything. So they got rid of it, build their, how the houses all around, you know, and the waterway was going to be decorative to go through. And they had every kind of weather problem and not because it rained or didn't rain is because there was no place for the rain to go safely. So it was taking out foundations. It was causing damage in the houses because the, the, People who built it didn't look into the science of what is happening. So within 10 years, they restored as much as they could. They put the creeks back. Guess what? The beavers also came back. And from that time on, when everybody started really studying what they were doing and then mimicking it on how deep and how where the the end should go where the barrier should go where you put a, a walkway over people don't have to walk down there and that community eventually thrived because it coexisted with the people and the animals that have the expertise to learn from and i wish i'd have been there when when they they did this i got to study it in in college for one of my animal science programs. And it was just like, yeah, see, now that's the way you should do it. Ask the pre ask the expert or go see and watch them. Because I don't know about beavers and people talking the same language. So maybe for you, it's just to watch them. If you have a degree in, I don't know, building number one, I bet you know a lot about what those animals are doing and why they're doing it in that place with those tools. It would be fabulous to know at least for me. I agree with you. Knowledge is power. Absolutely. So what questions haven't I asked you when it comes to deer or sustainability with wildlife? I would like to see everybody understand and uh, the wildlife game and preserve people who give out uh, licenses. I don't know what they're doing today. I don't have that touch anymore with anybody in that industry. But what I'd love to see is less licenses given out and more plants put in. Now, I realize we're doing much better because of the licensing. If it's still going the, the way I, the last time I checked in with somebody, which was a few, couple of years ago, is when you get a license, that's the way they regulate how many deer will be culled, shot, and taken out of the herds. What they can and cannot, I believe is still in the regulations. And, you know, they can get a buck, but it has to be over this age, that's a male. And they can get, you know, a, a deer, which is typically a female and, you know, back and forth. So Fish and Wildlife and many organizations throughout the world are doing a better job every moment, every day when they say, wait a minute, we can't do that because this and this, this. And a lot of people get really upset when they can't build a house where they think it's just the most beautiful place and they, they bought the land and why wasn't I told or they won't be sold the land because it's better so many times to leave things alone than to get our own personal, what would that be, Dr. Jacqueline, our personal wants, needs. I don't, I don't see any needs in any of that, what we're doing. And, and that happens where they have to put a road in to get everybody from some dangerous site or some town has been there and they've grown so large, you need to start accommodating some of that. I understand all that. So I, I encourage everybody to keep in mind that there's always a side effect from what we do. I don't care if we decide to go to a grocery store that day or we decide to sit out in the park that day, there's a chain reaction possible. In, in all our movements. If we can just keep that in mind and say, hey, I believe they deserve to, to live also. I have been known to pick up bugs and put them back in bushes or trees or whatever they had come from. I pick up spiders. So I do walk this talk. 
and I have tried it and I have been there. Have I been bitten by anybody? Uh, only once, only yes. once. You told us about the snake, so. <laughs> yep, so and that's it. Though that's, that's good. So if for somebody who's out there and they're not coexisting to any degree, um, they're not picking up trash and they really think everything is everyone else's problem. <laughs> what are a couple, just a couple tips in terms of changing mindset? Because sometimes we need some coaching to mm -hmm. understand how do we change our mindset from going here to going there. So what would you share with someone about some tips about how to change your mindset to be more inclusive and more about a team and humanity, everyone being on the same page as opposed to us fighting each other? Well, it would, what for me, I would do the watch and listen part when I first meet somebody like that or something that just happens. I'd rather sit and listen and hear the conversation. You'll learn so much by their body language. You learn so much about all our body language. You learn so much about what topics they, let's say you're in a crowd, five or more people, five or less people, whichever way. And everybody, you know, jumps in and because they're like in a group with some kind of commonality that they're all, you know, I don't know, Saturday brunches eaters or something, whatever their club is or something they like. And they get off on these topics. It's really interesting for the one that you watch somebody and see that they don't interact at all. And so there's there's a, an opening right there to maybe go for a walk with them later or something and say, hey, I, I'd love to hear your opinion with no you know judgment is hopefully where you're going with it. You don't necessarily have to say that. But when somebody feels like that they have the ability or the space in a group to say what they really think, that's the way to understand that this opens up a really great moment to pull our judgments back, to pull our, oh, you shouldn't do that. Oh, why'd you throw trash on the ground? And go with compassion. Because maybe this person has only seen being told, no, you can't do that. No, you can't do that. No, it's against the law. No, it's this. The only way I really truly believe that we'll all get on or at least try to do and get on the same path of saving lives so that we all get to the end in a sunny, wonderful way, like our background. And the first part is you got to let them talk about what, what they feel about different things. I have sat through people who chase animals for a living and, and hunters and bring them back. It's really hard for me because Animals don't stop communicating to somebody, especially like me, who has a psychic gift. I get to see and hear everything they've gone through. It's really a hard place to be. When animals and people die of natural cause, it's easier. I, I handle that pretty easily because, again, it's a process that we're all going to go through. But an animal and our indoor person who's been taken of their life, somebody shot them, somebody drove over them, somebody hit them, Wh whatever their reason is, it's really hard, at least for me. It's, it gets really complicated of, I have what they call a, an empath part of me, where I feel what you feel. So if I walk by somebody, and I, I have to slow down, it's not like I'm checking, checking in on anybody, but somebody who's really, really, really having a bad day and, and they blame it on themselves and they're, you know, we've all had those. That is a point where I know I need to put up a little bit of prevention and, and distance, even if it's spiritually, and then say, I really like to talk to that person and, and see how I can help. It might be. And most of the time I leave, leave it to this. I just listen. I just listen. And I encourage everybody to go out in the weather, go out in the trees, go out in the snow, go out and talk to the animals. When I was a kid, I did it all the time. Nobody seemed to care because there's nobody around in the desert. But imagine you can be a child again or not and imagine what they say back to you. It can be as fun as that. I did a lot of that. It was a lot of fun. But I said this and you said that. And you can return us all back to those days of just being quirky and fun and animals 
are all about, of course, so much of that. And if you've never seen a squirrel run up a tree and that tail, oh my gosh, it, it's a laughing game. And then you go into any of the chimpanzees or you go into the, the donkeys and the dirt and whatever. They're hopping around and having a great time when they are. And it's fun to watch. You can get a hundred YouTube <laughs> channels and see that and go, wow, I'd like to have some of that joy. And then share that with anybody or whoever you feel up to. Wow, I didn't anticipate that. It's so beautiful, as you know, that I'm a real proponent about listening, elevated listening skills and active listening. I love how you shared that when someone has a difference of opinion, you don't go in there guns blazing, literally. You <laughs> really step back and you listen to what they have to say and, and honor what they're sharing and then mm -hmm. give them a different perspective. I also love the fact that you're encouraging people to get into nature, talk to the animals, hug a tree. <laughs> exactly. Get out of, of where Wherever you are in your comfort zone and commune with nature. I think that is absolutely beautiful. Yeah. And we really need it. It's, it's so exciting when um, lately I have people around me getting um, butterflies in the cocoon and they're, and they're, then they're having them hatch and like, I don't know if it's hatching, but I'm going to use that word as they come out of the chrysalis and they come out of their bubble and the wings are out and saw a really great uh, video the other day that a friend had said, you know, you have to see this. I, I just know you're going to love it. And it's like, okay, I hope I love it. <laughs> it's been going on in my head. I'm going to make up that. And then all of a sudden it's about all these wonderful butterflies coming out and you might think that they're just put here for beauty and joy or for the cats to chase or something, but they're not. They, everybody has a plan yes. and that includes you. That includes me. That includes all of us. So wouldn't you want somebody to be happy and jovial and, and seriously happy around you and you put that out and people come and say, oh, I feel better when you're around. I would love hearing that. That would be just yes. like, really? But I don't have to hang around with you all day, right? <laughs> because we all know we have that friend or that person that needs more than everybody else. Is it yes. bad? Is it good? Well, you do still get to put perimeters that keep you safe. And I actually teach called safe. setting boundaries and asking permission. So Absolutely. you and I are we're definitely in the same alignment, which is amazing. Absolutely. Well, we have our next show coming up right after this. How can people reach out to you and who is a good client for you? Well, if everything or anything I've said uh, rings a bell for you, that makes a great beginning for us to work together. I have clients all over the world. So you just have to tell me, I will ask usually, what time zone are you in? Because I, I learned a couple of years ago that when things got more distant, it's like, oh, wait a minute, <laughs> my time might not be your time. So just let me know what you need to know if you want to know how your pets are doing. The conduit, the telephone cord, if you want to call it, is your relationship with your pet. That gives me permission because I don't just go around and talk to everybody everybody's pet. Now if I'm walking down the street or sometimes I'll go, oh you're so cute. And the dog will go, oh I can hear her. And then I leave it alone because I don't know the owner. I don't want to freak out everybody. So just know I, I come with your blessing, not before, not after. And we have the conversation either your pet is needing to have you here and or you start off with how come you're pooping on my couch all the time? And we find out as much as we can. Animals who are spoken to by their people do so much better learning tools from trainers and talking to pet psychics. So I wanna really encourage you to whoever you get help with, talk to your animals, whatever they are. If it's a butterfly or if it's a dog or you know, if you have an elephant, I'm sure there's some laws in there that you need to have license for. But the conversation is so wonderful when your animal understands and you talk to them all the time. I happen to live with three cats and they all were rescues at different times. And we just talk to them. We'll say, Thomas, stop doing that. Jackson, stop doing that. Get off there. I told you that. <laughs> all of the same things that we would, a, a, a child or a person, and we give the results and... Excuse me. 
and the actions of what we're talking about. So it's a lot easier for them to understand. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Uh, another fabulous episode. <laughs> and we'll look forward to seeing you again next week, Amina. Have a great one. Absolutely. And if anybody wants me to cover something specific, drop me a line. Drop Dr. Jacqueline a line. She knows where I live. <laughs> and, <laughs> and we'd be glad to talk about a subject that actually is something you're dealing with now. And because I do a lot of private appointments, that doesn't mean you can't be our free private appointment. We're only going to do one or two a show. If, if everybody calls at the same time, we're going to have to spend you out. But just know, give us a call. I'd be glad to help. Oh, that's so sweet. Thank you very much. All yeah. right. Bye for now. See you next week. See you next week. And as we close out this week, thank you, everyone. We just have one announcement, which is that in addition to the live video broadcast, you can also listen to our programs as podcasts. So if you go to our YouTube channel, USA Global TV and radio, I'm going to just share these latest numbers. This is the link to get to our channel down here at the bottom, youtube.com slash C slash USA Global TV. You can find all of our live broadcasts there. And our shows are also being turned into podcasts. So if it's an audio only, you want to be able to take a listen while you're out walking or you're driving or you're doing something else you can start to find the podcast there. Uh, we've got over 3,500 shows, so we are slowly, we have 11 podcasts uploaded now. You can also find them on Spotify and other podcast platforms. So please do go to our YouTube channel and subscribe. We also have a second YouTube channel, which is Dr. Jacqueline Kerbeck. It has the same uh, content there. You can also subscribe and watch our shows there or listen to them as podcasts. Well, thank you again. We'll look forward to seeing you on Monday. It's been an absolute pleasure having you here with us. We were signing off for right now. Please have a fabulous weekend. Bye.